FMS, Flight Management System. The FMS is designed to provide continuous automatic navigation guidance and performance management. It has the layout of a screen and an alphanumeric keypad beneath. It was first introduced on the Boeing 737-200 in 1979 as a performance data computer system. The flight management computer was a huge technological step forward. Smith's Industries, formerly Lear Siegler, has supplied all FMCs installed on the 737. The performance data computer systems were jointly developed by Boeing and Lear Siegler in the late 1970s. It enabled engine pressure ratios and airspeed indicator bugs to be set by the computer and advise on the optimum flight level, all for best fuel economy. It was trialled on two in-service aircraft, a Continental 727 and a Lufthansa 737 for nine months in 1978, with regular line crews and a flight data observer. The 737 showed average fuel savings of approximately 3%, with a two-minute increase in trip time over an average 71-minute flight. The 727 gave an approximate 4% fuel saving because of its longer sector lengths. The performance data computer system quickly became standard fit and many were also retrofitted. By 1982, the auto throttle had been devised and thrust levers could be automatically driven to the values specified by the performance data computer system. The true FMC was introduced with the 737-300 series in 1984. This kept the performance database and functions, but also added a navigation database, which interacts with the autopilot and flight director autothrottle and IRSs. The integrated system is known as the flight management system, of which the FMC is just one component. Most aircraft have just one flight management computer, but there is an option to have two. This is usually only taken by operators into MNPS airspace, for example, oceanic areas. The FMS can be defined as being capable of four dimensional area navigation, latitude, longitude, altitude, and time, while optimizing performance to achieve the most economical flight possible. Components of the FMS. The two main components are the control display unit, which is what you see in the flight deck, and the flight management computer, which is hidden away in the electronics bay. The control display unit is the pilot interface to the FMC. There are normally two CDUs, but only one FMC. Think of it as having two keyboards connected to the one computer. The navigation database is used to store route information, which the autopilot will fly when in LNAV mode. When given data such as zero fuel weight and maximum authorized takeoff weight, it takes inputs from the fuel summation unit to give a gross weight and best speeds for climb, cruise, descent, holding, approach, and drift down. These speeds can all be flown directly by the autopilot and autothrottle in VNAV mode. It will also compute the aircraft's position based upon inputs from the IRS's GPS and radio position updating. You can think of the FMS as a library with lots of books with separate pages. Here's the index page. It's got ident, position, performance, takeoff, approach and offset, and nav data, and nav status. You can press on line select keys on the left and right of the screen to select these particular books in the library. If you look at the top right, you can see one of one, which indicates there's only one page on this particular book. Here's the ident section of which there are two pages. And here we can see that it's a 737-800 series and the engine rating and particular navigation database in use. At the bottom of the screen are quick links back to the index or onto a typical next page,
which is position initialization. Here's the position initialization page, of which there are three. There's a reference airport and an option for a gate. Here's the position reference pages, of which we're looking at page two of three. The FMC position gives particular coordinates and speeds. There's also the left and the right IRS and the GPS left and right and also radio position updating position. The pilot can choose any of these to select. Here's the routes page, of which there are three. This is for Stansted on a flight to Dublin. Another section of the routes page showing an active route direct to a waypoint PENIL via an airway to Ramox. L70 to Bagso, Bagsil to Lapmo, to take the ILS for runway 28. Looking at the particular legs, you can look at more detail at what the tracks are. 278 degrees, for example, 10 nautical mile leg, with recommended flight levels. Here's the cruise page, one of one. It's an active economy cruise with a cruising altitude of flight level 300. The optimum is actually higher, flight level 394, with a maximum of 402. It's got various other information on there, such as target speeds, a particular N1 setting for turbulence penetration, and how much fuel is estimated for arrival. Here's the descent page. It's showing an economy path descent, page one of one. Once again, target speeds, times, distances, levels. Here's the progress page, one of four. This is showing particular legs, altitudes, actual times of arrival, and estimated times of arrival with expected fuel. Another progress page showing headwind and crosswind in terms of knots, the actual wind, temperature and ISA deviation, and cross-track error, true airspeed. Progress page four of four, the required navigation performance versus actual. So for the particular airspace that we're in, there's a required navigation performance of two nautical miles, and the actual is 0 0.06 nautical miles being achieved, with a cross-track error of zero. For the approach, it's an RMP of 0.5 nautical miles. Here's an engine page, N1 limit. So it's a quick reference for the go around, economy, climb or cruise, what settings, if you were to set them manually on the thrust levers. Of course, you could be using auto throttle. Here's the departure arrivals page. So, you can quickly access Stansted or Dublin by pressing the line select keys on the left or right to enter more pages with details for departure and arrival aerodrome. Here's the departures page for Stansted, for example. And you can see standard instrument departures, Barkway and BUZA 2S, BUZA 7R and Clacton. One echo. Here are the Dublin arrivals. So, standard terminal arrival routings and approaches for particular approaches the ILS, the VOR at Dublin.